Okay, welcome back. I've got another tutorial for you today. Uh, this is a little bit of a different, different uh, job I'm doing. Um, the customer's coming with an Epson printer. Um, now, it was an Epson LQ300. Uh, look, it's not really worth fixing printers. Um, but I said if you pull the thing, thing apart, drop, drop the main, main base in, I'll put the multimeter over it. So, it's a bit of a love job this because I like tracing faults through and it had a standard switch mode power supply in and um, I'm doing tutorials on repairing power supply so it doesn't really matter what the power supply is in a game console, a TV, pretty much any device the principles are very much similar to when you how you track the fault through so um, once again it's not really viable to do these things but um, it's a tutorial on a learning curve and teaches you how to just fault diagnose fault in power supplies in general, which can be applied to pretty much any, any device. So, um, without further ado, we'll get this printer. Um, I'll just grab it here for you to show what we're doing. Um, so, I'll get him to drop the, the printer in with less sort of top housing. And uh, there's the power supply. It basically, as I said, there's no power. So, we'll pull this there. I'll, I'll pull this power supply out and I'll show you how we crack the fault through. Okay, we're back with this printer. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check there's a little fuse down here. And the fuse is open. So normally a fuse don't does, you don't get a faulty fuse. There's no such thing as a faulty fuse. Pretty rare. Usually a fuse will blow because you've got a short somewhere in your in your system. So what I normally like to do We've got to shorten the system. This main capacitor here, which is your main filter capacitor, we're going to measure across it because there could be power. It could it could store up to 300 volts on on it on that. So you don't want to get zapped. So very first thing I'm going to do is put a multimeter across it in DC volts, and it's reading zero volts. I hope you can see that. Right out of the way. Okay, so it's reading zero volts. So then what I like to do, we know the fuse is open. We're going to see if we've got a short, right, on the bridge rectifier or on the filter capacitor. A short will show up anywhere from the primary circuit um, if you read it read across this capacitor. So um, very rarely the capacitor itself will go shorted. So uh, on ohms, just measure across that capacitor. We've, we've measured DC and there's no DC. So if we were to measure on ohms across that capacitor, while there's voltage on there, it'll blow our multimeter up. So and it's reading two ohms. So that's pretty much a dead short. Okay. So we know we've got a shorted. Maybe a capacitor, we had dead short in our power supply, that's why the fuse is blown, okay? There's no use just throwing a fuse in, turning on, it's just going to blow again, so. So what I'm going to do, I'll come back shortly and I'll just pull this power supply out, and then I'll show you how I track through. Okay, welcome back to this, welcome back to this power supply. Now, yeah, I'm just going to measure it with a meter. We know we've got a dead short across our capacitor. We know our fuse is open. Uh, the bridge rectifier. It's reading a short across the secondary, but the primary is okay. The most common culprit would be this FET. This FET, which is this transistor here, which does all the work. Um, it's got a gate drain and source, so it's a FET, which is short for field effect transistor. So it's reading the short, so I say that's the culprit. So we're going to remove that. Sometimes when you desolder it helps to actually add solder. 
lead, lead solder to the lead free solder. Okay, we've got our, our chopper, our fat chopper removed. The reason they call it a chopper is because it, 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 it switches on, it switches really fast, on off, on off, on off, on off. That's why it's called a chopper. Okay. So that's reading a short, so your fat transistor is shorted, so it's shorted everywhere. So it's a K1603, so that'll be a 2SK1603. They don't put the two S on there, and we're just going to look at look that up. Two SK sixteen oh three is a it's a MOSFET N channel MOSFET uh, two point five amp forty watt BUK. BUK series can be replaced. Okay, so what we're going to do, now that's shorted. I've got a heavy duty, really heavy duty uh, fit. I bought a back pack of 20 of these, um, 24 N60 M2s. They're put out of the PS4 power supply. PS4, yeah, PS4 power supply. So I've got new ones of these, so it's the same. I've looked up the specifications, it's also the same, it's also a N-channel MOSFET, so it's going to kink our leg around the same as that. We're going to put some silicon grease on there, if I can find it. Just help heat transfer, but this one's not going to get hot because the specifications of this vet far exceed this one here. So it's not going to, it's going to do the job easily. Just replaced our fat transistor. I'm going to trim my legs off a little bit. Now, I'm going to measure across that capacitor. So we've got no short. So that's okay. Bridge rectifier is okay, but we've got no short now across there. Now sometimes these these uh, fits go, they'll take a resistor or something out with them. Uh, there's a 1.5 ohm resistor there that looks not burnt, so we're just going to measure that. 1.5 ohm, so that's okay. And we're going to make sure that we didn't have a short. This is our primary, this side of the transformer is our primary side of our circuitry and that side is our secondary. So I'm going to make sure we haven't got a short on the secondary because if you get a dead short on here this poor thing can't handle, it can handle a short only for so long, okay? So I'm going to make sure that the secondary diode or maybe straight across this capacitor is a good idea and it's okay and our diode so we've got AC coming out of here gets rectified by this diode and then you filter it, filtered by this capacitor, okay? Um, 
junk, got a jungle IC, so most, most of this circuitry here is, 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 is controlled by this jungle IC. This is a low signal circuitry. Um, it drives our tropic transistor. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly meet a couple of other components here so it's looking alright. So we might be we might be lucky, we might just have an isolated case here. No, we haven't. We've got a dead short here. So part of our short's gone. Yeah, that's dead short. So the FET transistor is shorted, but normally they, it's not a lone woof. Normally there's a few other things that go wrong with it. Takes it one thing, takes the other out. So there is a little diode down in here. This in the primary circuitry here, and that's what I measured across the back. Things like diodes is what I measure. So when I measure across there, it's reading a short. Now just bearing in mind, uh, we could be reading. No, we're not. So I reckon that diode is shorter. Pretty confident about that. So we've got to get that little diode out of there. It could be a Zener diode. We don't, don't know what it is. Um, looking at the direction of its output, if it's ground, if that's going to ground, and it is. So with our capacitor here, it's got a line on it, so, that, so that's ground, that's positive, that is earth, and that is our diode, so our diode is actually going from earth, okay, to that point, so that diode would have to be a Zener diode. Because that is the way Zener diodes are configured. So I'm just going to put my light back here. I'm just going to desolder this diode here. And that's a worry because we do not no idea what reference voltage that would be. Uh, coming off the FET, so. Um, coming off the gate of the FET, so um, if it's gate, I don't think it's a high voltage, Zener. So normally your drain and your source is your, your main rails and they're your higher voltage. Um, so your gate is just like a trigger. So I'd say it's a low voltage Zener diode. We may be in trouble here unless I can get a circuit diagram, schematic diagram. Um, Anyway, I'll look under the microscope and see if I can find out what this is. Back shortly. Okay, welcome back. So I've got this power supply out of a Epson printer. Uh, we've we've uh, worked out that the fuse had blown and it had a shorted uh, FET transistor, uh, N-channel MOSFET, which I just used a one over P, out of a PS4, which is slightly heavier specification, but still still okay. This diode number D2, this diode D2, uh, looks like a Zener, it's wide like a Zener, but the, the, the symbol on the circuit board is just shows as a standard diode. Now, I've looked it up and I found out that the diode was, I, on the schematic diagram, I got hold of the schematic diagram online for one of these, and the diode was an 11 EQ SO4 which is a 1 amp 40 volt shot key diode, which is not a Zener, but it, it is wired like a Zener. Uh, so I've been able to get an equivalent diode, which is an, a 1N5819. So we're gonna throw that diode in. Try and get 
replace your shorter tires. Uh, 48 cents or whatever it was at J car. Um, so get that in there. So basically, any of these power supplies that you find, you've got a diode um, that's off the positive lift capacitor. Um, sorry, any diode that's wired to the ground. Um, and then to, to then to you know, to the rail, you might find that it's um, not a not a Zena diode. It's a Schottky diode. Okay, so we've got that in there. I'm just going to solder that in, and we're ready for the test. So. Back shortly when the iron heats up. Okay, so uh, let's just get this diode in there. Then I'm going to rather than connect it all back into the into the frame, I'm just got an AC cord here. I'm just going to solder uh, neutral and active. I'm just going to solder my cord on, just for testing purposes, to see if this thing's going to fire up. So we've got our power supply connected, 240. And we're going to test this out. Now to test this out, we're going to have a secondary voltage up here, obviously up here. Um, whether we've got a feedback circuit, we're not sure. Maybe we have, but there definitely should be voltage on this capacitor here. So it says 50 volts there, so we expect a fairly high range voltage there. Stand back, turn it on. Just going to check my shoes and make sure my shoes has not blown. Hasn't. Okay, so on this capacitor here, on the primary of your power supply, primary is anything on this side of the transformer. Uh, we should have maybe a couple hundred volts there, maybe 300 volts. We'll have a look. We have 338 volts DC. Okay. Have we got an output? We have 34 volts. Because that was a 50 volt capacitor, you'd, you'd expect to have, well, less than 50, but it's not a 20 volt capacitor, so you'd expect 30, 35 volts at minimum. So that's all working. So now we can give it back to the customer, he can test it, and uh, hopefully <coughs> should be up and running. Back shortly. Okay, so that's how we do a, just a basic power supply uh, fix. Um, it's not rocket science, it's just basic f uh, f tracing the fault through and um, replacing the components. So um, all your power supplies, I do the same thing. All, every power supply I do, I do the same method. Start from the primary, that capacitor, chopper, work my way through. Uh, sometimes they can be easily quickly fixed and sometimes they can be a bit of a challenge. So, But it's obviously not worth replacing parts in a printer, power supply, but main reason I'm doing this for educational purposes so give you an insight into how we crack uh, faults through on the pass on a switch mode power supply so you can apply that principle to pretty much any power supply uh, there is slight variations in them but the principles are pretty much the same so um, this is just an educational video so hope you enjoyed it um, thanks for watching and please subscribe and have a nice day thank you